is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. May we all stand for our call to worship. We welcome you to our services on today. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Our choir will lead us in our praise songs. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Under heaven, whereby we must or can be saved. Save Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Welcome everyone this morning to our 10.30 a.m. worship service, our radio listeners and our internet observers. God bless you and thank you for supporting Trinity Baptist Church. Pray God's blessing will continue to be with you and you receive a blessing from the service this morning. Amen. Our responsive reading is found in your bulletin, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 30, the New King James Version and King James Version. <clears throat> For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he had been betrayed took bread he has given thanks. He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whosoever eats this bread and drink this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. All for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. God's word for God's people for such a time as this.
not say, if I be lifted up, who will draw all men? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Mankind, I will. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The Lord is good. The Lord, good. Goodness. For his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures. His truth endures. His truth endures forever. Welcome to the house of prayer. The many who have been away for a while, uh, traveled, God has safely brought them home. Those listening in our, in the virtual congregation, maybe some incarcerated, maybe also those who are hospitalized, someone in hospice, but always know my people, we are his, bought with a price. And if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Will you bow with me, those present, those in virtual land? Pray with me and pray for me, for this nation, the leaders. We'll pray for God's people. Let us pray. Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me in your righteousness. Make your path plain before your face. Make your way plain before our eyes. For it is you, Lord, you, Lord, only that makes each of us your people to dwell in safety. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them and you surround us with your favor as with a shield. Father, with an attitude of gratitude and a spirit of thanksgiving, thank you for drawing us to your house, your temple, where we can offer sacrifices of praise, prayer, and just gladness to be alive in the land of the living. Father, the world is ridiculously hard and deceptive most of the time. There are days when we feel attacked for no reason. Please give us your perspective in those situations. Father, you who know all and see all, we thank you for choosing us, for calling us before you cleansed us. Help us to remember who we are in Christ. Help us to see others through your eyes and not through the sneaky lies of the enemy meant to stir us against each other and tear us apart and, and break us apart and keep us confused and discombobulated and separated. Heal us. Heal us, O oh Lord. Remind us that no human being is perfect, but you are. You are. In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. Oh God, you are ever changing, unchanging, ever present, everywhere and all knowing. You are love, mercy, justice, forgiveness. 
you are compassion, and you are goodness. The goodness of God, always faithful, never faltering, never two-timing. Oh God, we love you. We don't say that enough, but we love you and we thank you. You are glorious, Father. This is who you are. You made us in your image and have given us a purpose and a calling that draws us to you daily. When our character is attacked and we are tempted to be offended and unforgiving, open our eyes and soften our hearts to hear and embrace you, for you know who we are. And so, Lord, filter our actions, our words, and our thoughts through the truth of your word, through your love, Father. May we be quick to forgive, sensitive to others, and prayerfully lift those who unjustly and unfairly attack us. Thank you for those who you have called and sent to protect us from the enemy of the evil one. Bless the security guards that you have sent to guard your sanctuary within and without. Thank you for Pastor Tunstall, his ministry, his service to you, his dedication to his people, his love for his family, his children, and his grandchildren. Strengthen him and guide him. Lead him, but Lord, as your people, teach us and guide us to listen to you through your elected and your chosen and appointed leaders. And we will be grateful and mindful to give you all the praise and honor and glory and thank you that we are connected to you through Christ. And that's where our confidence comes. We are connected and belong to you. In him who came and is coming again, even in the name of Christ our Savior, the Lion from the tribe of Judah, we pray. And all in agreement said, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen.
Amen. Uh, if you have your program on the very back of your program, I have the scriptures that we're going to share with you today. Two verses of scripture, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21, New King James Version, and also Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And I'm going to read them consecutively in your hearing. And it reads, he who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. Genesis 7, 1 says, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And so I want to talk to you for a little while today. Um, this is a part two of our discussion, Benefits of Pursuing Righteousness benefits of pursuing righteousness. Uh, we started this conversation with you last week out of Genesis 38, verse 26. Uh, we were looking at Judah and how he looked at righteousness in his life. And today we're going to look at Noah and how God lets righteousness um, manifest itself, how righteousness is shown in the life of Noah. And my hope is that as we look at these verses, we will see the benefits of pursuing righteousness. That's our goal, is to help you and I have the understanding and know the benefits of pursuing righteousness. Now, when it comes to unrighteousness, when it comes to doing things that are not right, it's almost always, almost every human being will see the benefit to them. If it's not right and we're tempted to do it, it's because we see the benefit. It, sometimes it's sexual, sometimes it's monetary, sometimes it's gonna give you fame or honor. Uh, you know, drug, drug dealers don't sell it just because they just like selling drugs, they see some benefit. And so uh, whenever there is unrighteousness, it's because we clearly see the benefit. But when it comes to righteousness, sometimes the benefit of being right it sometimes can be uh, veiled. Uh, it can be not seen as clearly. Uh, when somebody, somebody uh, says something they ought not to have said, it's, it's sometimes it's a struggle to see the benefit and not uh, responding back to them the way they acted towards us. The, you know, fighting fire with fire. Uh, if they curse you, then you curse them back better. I just see, we, we can see the benefit, but when it comes to doing what's right, sometimes the benefit isn't always as easily seen. Uh, Jesus says, when they curse you, you bless them. Uh, he says, when they, uh, when they ask you to go one mile, you go with them two miles. And, and uh, I'm a pretty experienced Christian but there are times when I don't see the benefit of doing that. Uh, I, 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 see, I see the benefit of doing it the wrong way, but it's harder to see the benefit of doing it the right way. And so I'm gonna try to lift up to you today uh, the benefits of doing it the right way as we look at these uh, passages of scripture. And today, uh, as I was looking through the scriptures, I wanted to see the first time the, uh, the word righteous was used. And in the New King James Version, the first time righteous is used is in the book of Genesis regarding Noah. This is the very first time God uses the word righteous, which was a little uh, surprising to me because I thought it might, I thought it might have been said uh, with, with uh, Adam, you know, especially before the fall, I thought it might have been said, but everybody was righteous before the fall. It was after the fall when we are clearly now given the choice of either being right or wrong that we find the very first person to be right or righteous is Noah. And so uh, this is the very first time the word righteous is used, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come to the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before this generation. So one of the, one of the uh, things I want to try to lift up uh, today uh, as we look at this passage of scripture is in this first part of your outline, your righteousness gets you invited 
into the ark of safety. You get invited by God. God says, no, come into the ark. And we are invited, you and I are invited into the ark of his presence, into the ark of safety. Our foremothers and forefathers used to call it the old ship of Zion. That, that was the ark of God that God invites us into. We are a part of being invited into the ark of God because we have taken on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, first John, I think, yeah, first John chapter three, verse seven says that Jesus Christ is righteous and then we follow his righteousness. And because we follow his righteousness, he says, now don't be tempted to go astray. And that is always a temptation for us because uh, the devil always wants to get us off of being righteous. But Jesus Christ is our righteousness. And so if we will follow him, remember he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That life is the life of righteousness. So we, we, we are invited in. Now, because we're invited in, it doesn't mean that we go in. Uh, I'm grateful that when God invites Noah in, Noah actually goes in. But I want you to know this is what God invites everyone, everybody you've ever seen, he invites into this ark of righteousness. He invites into this ark of safety. He invites you. He invites me. He doesn't wait till we're perfect because none of us are perfect. He invites us in just as we are. Doesn't matter what your proclivities are, doesn't matter uh, what, what's, uh, so many people got so many secrets now, especially now with the internet, you can just be in your private little world and have all kinds of things going on, good or bad. But God sees all and even with him seeing all, he invites us in. Now, when God invites you in, regardless of how much weight you're carrying, how much, now we talk, the, the Bible talks about sin as a weight. And when you're carrying this heavy weight of sin, God will invite you in regardless of how heavy your sin weight is. Doesn't matter how heavy it is. Doesn't matter how light you may think you are. And some people think they got lightweight sins but even your lightweight sin would send you to hell. And so you need this Christ. And this Christ invites us in, whether we got lightweight sins or heavy sins, he invites all of us in. And then when he invites us in, he does not leave us the way he found us. Don't, you don't, 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 don't try to change without him because you're going to fail. So just come on in with whatever you have. Whatever your proclivity is, whatever your sin, or lightweight sins you might want to call it, whatever it is, come on in to Christ. He will not leave you the way he finds you. Christ makes the difference. He saves. That's what he's doing with Noah. He said, Noah, come into this ark. You, you, you've been righteous, but your righteousness will not save you. You need to come into the ark. It is the righteousness of Christ that saves us. And so here we have this, uh, you, this invitation. You are invited. That's the first part of your outline. You are invited into the ark. Second thing I want you to know, and this is a good thing, one of the benefits of righteousness, uh, that I'm, I'm, uh, I want to encourage you to recognize this benefit of righteousness because when, when I'm aware of this benefit, it always changes my behavior. Every time the Lord illuminates this in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, it changes the way I act. And I believe when you become aware of it and it illuminates in your heart and illuminates in your mind, it will change your behavior. So let me look at what it is. Second part of your outline, the Lord sees and speaks because he says, I have seen that you are righteous. God sees I need you to know that God sees the way we behave. God sees your behavior. Uh, they, they tell me that, I was reading statistics, uh, that uh, a large percentage, more than 50% of Christian people uh, have uh, these uh, internet, uh, internet uh, pornography and internet other social things that are not what the Bible says 
men and women of God should be doing. There's over 50% of Christians. I go to some, uh, how should you call it? Some kind of, uh, and, and, it's, and it's gotten worse since we've been staying at home. And so we, we, need, to, uh, we need to address, uh, there's no such thing as right pornography. Uh, pornography is just wrong. It, it, and, it, and it doesn't matter whether anybody else knows you are on that site or not, it's still just wrong. And so we got, we got to deal with just wanting to be right, even when don't nobody else know that we've done something wrong. I need you to be convicted that God knows. And because God knows, we need to decide, I don't want to do anything that is going to be uh, contrary to the will of my God. The word righteous, uh, actually, I looked at the etymology of the word, and it has to do with, uh, it actually was a Middle English word that actually meant right wise. I mean, being wise to what is right. Uh, and why, what, being wise means that it, wisdom comes from God. So, that, so to being right is, is connected to who God is. And if you and I are connected to who God is, then we want to make sure that we are honoring this God who we say is the Lord of our lives. God does not say he's the Lord of your lives. He lets you say it. And if you mean that, then he does become the Lord of your life. That's why we love that 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, look who's saying it. That wasn't the Lord saying that. That was David saying it. And if you will claim him as your shepherd, then he's saying, now I want you to live and work and walk like he's your shepherd. If I claim the Lord is the Lord of my life, then I have to decide I'm going to live that way for that Lord. And so here, uh, this text tells us the Lord sees, he says, because I have seen that you are righteous. And my friends, God is looking. God wants, he wants to see that in your life. God wants to see righteousness in your life. And, 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 and righteousness is best shown when uh, things start to uh, tempt us, when things start to go against us. How do, how do you manifest righteousness in your daily life? Well, the scripture tells us God sees. And I want you to know not only does God see, uh, God also speaks. So the, he sees and he speaks because he sees our righteousness. He actually is speaking to Noah uh, because Noah is following righteousness. Do you want God to speak to you? Do you want God to uh, make himself known to you? Then God has to see some righteousness. Righteousness comes from his son, Jesus the Christ. And when God sees you and I are trying to be right, in fact, the Bible says it right here, because I've seen your righteousness. And then it tells us the Lord, the very first part of that sentence says, then the Lord said. The Lord said means the Lord is speaking. He's speaking to Noah and he's acknowledging to Noah that I've seen the way you walk, the way you behave, the way you act toward people. And our speaking and our behavior is something that God said, because of that, I will speak to you. I'll speak to you. I'll speak to your heart. I'll speak to your mind. I'll, 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 I, will, I will be a lamp to your feet. I'll guide you along the right pathway. Uh, we need to make sure that we are doing our very best to live righteous for our Christ. Our righteousness, the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. I, I want to live in a right nation, but that means we got to live righteously. Righteousness exalts a nation. It won't just bless you, it'll bless your whole nation. It'll bless the United States of America. It allow us to bless the rest of the world. Righteousness lifts up, it exalts. And it says, but sin is a reproach. Our sin pulls down any people. Sin will pull down America. Sin will pull down Trinity. Sin will pull you down. 
We, we, we got to walk in righteousness and we got to make sure that we stay away from avoid sin. So the Lord says it to Noah. He says, I come into the ark. I'm inviting you in. I've, I've, I'm speaking to you because I have seen your righteousness. And then the third part of your outline, I just want you to note that uh, uh, righteousness brings uh, life, righteousness, and honor. That's Proverbs 21, 21. Uh, that's what when you, when, you, when you actually live right, this is what you're going to find in your life. You're going to find life, which is uh, the purpose of living. Uh, wh wh why did God make you and why are you here? God, God has a purpose for you. And you will find that purpose when you decide you're going to live right for him. Doesn't matter what your age is, God has a purpose for every age he allows us to be in. Whatever age you are, God has a purpose for that age. And so here he tells us it's, it's, it's life, righteousness, and honor. But I also note for you Matthew 24, 38 and Luke 17, 27, because those are the New Testament references where Jesus speaks about Noah. Noah is spoken of by Jesus Christ in these two verses. And in both of those verses, it speaks of Noah coming into the ark. That's why I have them there. Uh, in, in Matthew's version and Luke's version, uh, the, Jesus specifically talks about Noah coming into the ark. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that, that, that was a decision that God uh, made the invitation to Noah, and then Noah had to receive that invitation. And that's the same invitation God makes for us. And Jesus acknowledges Noah having made that, uh, having received that invitation, and Jesus is also acknowledging the righteousness of Noah. Now, he wasn't perfect. Uh, and I'm not going to go into his faults and flaws today, uh, but he wasn't a perfect man, but he was a righteous man. And he is one that Christ, uh, years and years, centuries after Noah had died, centuries later, Christ is still honoring his name. And my brothers and sisters, Christ will do that for you and I if we will live righteous. God the Father says the Lord, uh, that Noah is righteous, and now God the Son acknowledges this man uh, and Noah as having come into the ark, and that ark represents the safety of God. It represents the salvation of God. Uh, Noah was a saved man, and he was a saved man that did his best to walk upright before God. That's what our law wants from us. The benefit of righteousness is that our God will call us by name. Our God will say to us that you've been faithful over a few things. You did your best to be righteous. Come on up and be beside me now. Enjoy the privilege of being in the Father's presence. We, we got this God who will bless us. But let me get to the last thing I'll be finished for this morning. Our final thing is this. Uh, God says to Noah, uh, coming to the ark, uh, you and your household. I want you to note that this is not just for you, but it's for your household. It's for your, your uh, community family. It's for your biological family. It's for your church family. It's for your national family. It's for your worldwide family. It's not just for you. Uh, righteousness is not a selfish act. Righteousness is a community act. Righteousness is making your world a better world. And so God makes it clear to know it's not just for you. He says it is for you, but he says, and all your household. The Noah comes to the door. You, somebody say you. God is concerned about you. You personally, God is concerned about you. He, 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 he puts it in his word. I am concerned about you. It is for you, but he said, but not only you, you and your household. Our God is concerned about our communities. He's concerned about our neighborhoods. He's concerned about our world. And so God saves us, not just for ourselves, but for also our community and for our household. We, we're all a part of the family of God. And if we're all a part of the family of God, God says, now come into my family. Now there are some, uh, uh, I'm from Kentucky in the South. There are some rules that when you, you can do some things outside, that when you come into the house, uh, you, you gotta 
uh, leave some things outside. You, you can't act inside the way you acted outside. Uh, that, that, that's what we call inside behavior. And uh, some Christians, they come inside, but they still act like they outside. And if you come inside, but you're going to act like you're outside, then the persons that are in charge inside got to correct your behavior. It's, it's inside behavior. And, and, and so God says, now when I invite you inside, you can't bring outside behavior. Uh, you, you, you can't lie inside. You can't cheat inside. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, push people around when you're inside because you, you, you left that out. That, that's outside behavior. And God is calling you and I to inside behavior. We, and inside behavior means I don't act like I'm outside anymore. I, 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 I have been saved and because I've been saved, I can't act like an unsaved person anymore. I can't do what unsaved people do because I've been saved. It doesn't matter what you tempt me with. Don't doesn't matter what you tell me the benefits are going to be. I, I, I have to say, but I'm inside. You, you, you're talking about outside behavior. I'm not outside anymore. And what our Christ does, our Christ lifts Noah up in these verses, in verse uh, Matthew 24, 38 and Luke 17, 27, Christ lifts him up and he said, because Noah came inside the ark. And that's what God wants from us. That's, that's, that's how Christ is going to call your name if you will come inside. Leave the outside behavior outside and come inside and be with our Christ. Finally, the Bible tells us we must be righteous. We must be inside in this generation. Doesn't matter who you're around. Doesn't matter if you live in a nursing home and there's only seniors in there. You're supposed to be in this generation to those people in that nursing home. You ought to be the light of the world. You, you ought to live righteously. Uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, if you're a teenager and you're on a sports team with other teenagers, then you're supposed to be the light of the world to those teenagers. And whatever your situation is, a young adult, middle age, a little child, whatever you are, our Christ says, now, I'm a, I need you to be right in your generation. So that all the generations that see you will see the light of Christ. We, we, we got a calling to live right in this generation. And God then honors that call because that call will not only bless you in your generation, it'll bless future generations long after you're gone. That's what the Bible tells us about Noah. Noah was, he was righteous in his generation. But even after Noah has passed and Noah has died, we still point to the righteousness that he had and say, now I want to do like he did. I want to live righteous. I want to I wanna be a part of the family of God. And when we're a part of that family of God, when, when Jesus finally does come, I hope it's soon. But he may, he may tarry. He, he, the only reason he tarry is because there's still some that, are, that could be saved if we would open up our mouths and tell them about the Christ. They could be saved. If, if we do our part at the taste of soul, letting people know about Jesus the Christ, we, we can save some. And God has given us the opportunity to reach one more for Christ. But when he does come, Whenever that is, he's going to come with your name on the, in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I, I can't wait to hear him call my name. It, it might take him 10,000 years. I'm going to stand the 10,000 years waiting to hear him call my name. And my brothers and sisters, when we, when we hear the Lord say, well done. 
you, 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 you did your best to live righteous. You did your best. Now he's gonna tell you, I, I remember I had, to, I had to take some of those words out your mouth. But, but once I took them out, you didn't say them anymore and, and you live righteous. Our God wants to call our names and it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna, it's gonna lift us, it's gonna, it's gonna bless us, it's gonna strengthen us, it's gonna make us say hallelujah, he called my name. Hallelujah. He called my name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to stop right there. Will you stand with me? Maybe somebody wants to accept this Christ today. He is a living Savior. He will bless you. for communion. Deacons will bring the table out. We're ready. We're going to go right into our communion. We are serving communion and we are ready to serve. You don't have to do that. I'm a, I'll just stand right there.
We're going to offer the blessing over the communion. Uh, our responsive reading was the communion text. I'm just going to offer the blessing and we're going to be ready to serve. All right, Deaconess, you may come. As these ladies will be lifting the veil, you may go ahead. They will lift the veil, and it symbolizes the veil that was rent in two in the temple and gives us free access now to the body of Christ. This was a significant aspect of Jesus Christ being risen from the dead. The Bible says that the, that the temple veil was rent in two. And it, everybody had free access. And so we come and lift that veil, symbolizing our free access to our Christ. Most holy and all wise God, we thank you for the free access now. We thank you, Lord, that you still are the light of the world. Pray that you would let that light shine brightly in us. Forgive me, forgive my brother and sister, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of all unrighteousness. And help us as we partake of this supper today. Help us to live more righteous for you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand as we prepare to take this communion. Just before we partake, we have a special prayer request by Brother Ezra Bowles, and I'm gonna lift up that request right now. Let us pray. Gracious God, Brother Bowles, is who is our oldest male member, he's come asking for a special prayer, and we're asking that you would bless as he has to go into an eye procedure. Pray that you would just continue to be with him, continue to bless as you have all of these 96 years, I believe it is. Continue to be with him now. Thank you for his son. Thank you for all of his family. Continue to smile upon him. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you will lift the first tab, this first tab, this wafer of bread, if you would lift this tab, symbolizing Jesus Christ's body was lifted up on the cross for us. Gracious God, we know that you blessed it. It was in your hands. Now we ask that you would bless our hands as we partake. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Let us partake together. And let the church say amen. amen. If you lift the second tab, which represents the fruit of the vine, if you lift that cup, the Bible tells us that his blood did come streaming down. The word of God says that this fruit of the vine represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, let it cleanse us, make us whole, make us righteous. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us drink all of it. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you all and thank you again for being with us today.
Jesus coming.